Welcome. This is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you so much for stopping by. In the 11th chapter of Hebrews, you can go and read about many people in the Old Testament who lived by faith. And it talks about many of them and what they believed in and what they did. But the main thing they did is they believed in the truth of God and they believed His Word. And in chapter 12, Paul tells us, I believe Paul was the author of Hebrews. The commentators believe that it could be other people, but I kind of tend to believe it was Paul. But the author of Hebrews tells us in the 12th chapter that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. He's talking about all of those people that lived by faith. They stood up for the truth. And what does witness mean? It means to tell. And it means that those people who believe the Word of God, they lived by faith. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to imitate those people of faith by showing our faith and by standing up for what's right, by standing up for the truth. And Living it out, not just telling it, but living out our faith. And some people may think that cloud of witnesses means that all of those people are up in heaven watching us. I don't necessarily believe that they're all up there watching everything we do. I just think they have better things to do but you know I don't know everything maybe they have the ability to look down and see on the earth I don't know but I really believe that scripture is talking about we have a great and mighty army of people that have gone before us and they have told the truth and they have stood up as great witnesses to the truth of God's Word and what He has said. And God gave them promises and they believed the promises. But they did not see the birth of Jesus and that was one of the biggest promises that God gave. He said that Jesus Christ would be born as the Messiah. And they went to their death believing in the Word of God. And that's what we must do. We must believe in the Word of God until we pass on into eternity. Because believing in the Word of God and obeying it and standing up for the Word of God, putting our trust in Him and taking Jesus as our Savior is what will get us into crossing that line over into eternal life. God has given us a great and mighty promise. That's the promise that He has given us. And so let's stand up for the truth. Let's stand up for what's right. And you know, when a witness goes to court, he's questioned and he tells about what he saw. That's what a witness does. He's supposed to tell the truth. A witness tells and gave an account of what he saw and what he knows. So we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses back then and now. Stay tuned for Build your house upon the rock.
Welcome to the Good News Radio broadcast. Hello, this is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Before Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I listened to a man's testimony about how he had served God all of his life. One day, later on in his life, his wife came into the room and said something to him. He couldn't answer her. He had something wrong with his brain. He had a blood clot from his leg that went to his brain. The doctor told him that 90% of people that have this don't even make it to the hospital in time. His wife called the ambulance. He did make it and had to go into surgery. The doctor was amazed that he had lived to make it to the hospital. The doctor's prognosis was not good. He said, if he does make it through surgery, his brain will not function right. His leg was full of scar tissue. He did make it through surgery, though, and lived to tell about his miraculous experience. He put his faith and trust on the line for God to heal him. He said that when he was released to go home, he could hardly even walk to the mailbox. But he would say, by God's mercy and by his stripes, I am healed. He would take each step by faith. He lived each day by faith in God. He eventually was totally healed by the power of God. And his wife stood on the word with him. He didn't let negative words about his condition pass through his lips. He stood on the word of God. He had faith in God. He believed God for his healing and he got it. After he was healed, he and his wife asked the doctor to run a test on his leg. They wanted to see if the scar tissue was still there. And the doctor ran it as requested, and his leg was totally healed. There was no scar tissue whatsoever. The doctor said that it was a total miracle. God is a miracle-working God. He is wonderful, marvelous, loving, and kind. And he is the one that we should all build our lives upon. Jesus told about the man that built his house up on the rock. When the storms came and raged and raged and dashed the mighty waters against that rock, the house stood firm. Jesus is that rock that we can build our spiritual house upon. When the storms of life come, if we have built our lives around God, we will stand. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 that if you build your house upon the sand, you will not stand. The storms of life will just push you over. Jesus said, dig deep and build your house upon the rock. Our rock is Christ Jesus. How do we build our house upon the rock? It takes obedience to God to build your house upon the rock. If we neglect oh so great a salvation, then we will be building our house upon the sand. Have you neglected obedience to the simple commands and practices of God? Do you feel as if your foundations are being destroyed? Are you losing your marriage? Are you being destroyed financially? Are your kids leaving the commands of God? Do you feel helpless? Psalm 11 and 3 says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? We can look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus said the wise man builds his house upon the rock, and when the waves come and the storms blow, the house will stand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, and when the waves came and the storms blew, his house was blown away. Take a look at the two different men. The sand house went up quickly and didn't have a firm foundation. The man didn't take much time to build it. The house on the rock took a lot of time. The man had to dig deep to build his house upon a rock. This man had to work hard and long. The Greek word here for rock is a massive solid bedrock. Think of all the chiseling the man had to do, but it paid off. And when the storms came, his house stood. The foolish man's house was swept away. The foolish man may have felt smarter than the wise man for several years. The sand house may have lasted for a long time. Then the day came when the storm showed up. How did the foolish man feel then? 
He may have looked at the house on the rock and wished that he had been as wise as the wise man. Now the foolish man had no house at all. The wise man was sheltered and withstood the storms of life. Life out there on the beach might be fun for a while, but the storms of life always come. Make no mistake about it. There's no getting around it. The foolish man took the easy way out. He wanted to get his house built quickly. He didn't want to have to toil. The wise man wanted a house that would last forever. In every decision in life, there's a short view and a long view. Some people want to take the easy way out. They don't want to take the time to build. To build on Jesus Christ is to build for eternity. We must seek Jesus. We must obey him. That's how we build upon the rock. We watched a wonderful movie. The title of it is The End of the Sixth Happiness, starring Ingrid Bergman. The film is based on the true story of Gladys Alward. She was a British lady who felt the call of God upon her life to be a missionary to China. She overcame incredible odds to fulfill that call. She couldn't get backing to be sent over there. No one would accept her because she had no experience. They said she was not qualified. She decided to obey God on her own. She had grit and determination. It shows how she got to China on her own. It was amazing how God opened doors for her to get over there. Then, when she got over there, she had to learn the Chinese language. She hooked up with this older lady who was also a missionary. The film continued to show how her life made such a huge difference in the lives of the Chinese people. Eventually, World War II came and Gladys was able to save 100 Chinese children by taking them over the mountains to safety. She said, this is the reason that God wanted me to go to China. She believed that she had fulfilled her God-given destiny. This lady is a prime example of building your house upon a rock. She obeyed God. God doesn't call us all to be missionaries to China. God does require obedience from his children. There is a man who died and went to heaven and lived to tell about his experience. His name is Jim McComb. He wrote a book about his experience in heaven. The title of the book is Undiscovered Horizons. He tells of how he learned in heaven that each person that is born has a divine destiny. There's something that God wants each person that's ever been born to complete in this life. No one else can complete that destiny like that person. God has a purpose for us all. We should be diligent about obeying God. We should build our house upon the rock. And now this concludes the message today. Again, this is Brenda Harris blessing you in God's great favor.